Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's sermon text is the second lesson from Ephesians chapter 1. We're going to focus just on verses 3 through 6. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. This is the word of the Lord. Dear members of the Evangelism Committee, you've probably heard it before. The encouragement, you know, share your faith. You've heard the word of God, now go tell other people about it. You and I have, have kind of been conditioned to think and, and, and to realize that this is what we're supposed to do. But there's something not quite right about that. There's something that's not quite right about the way that it's said sometimes. A person may say, go, go spread the word to others now, but when that person says it, it sounds so easy and, and casual. But I'm guessing that, that you know that it's not that way. You may have never even tried to explain the gospel to somebody who doesn't know it or believe it because it's hard. It's hard to drum up the courage to actually do it and then it's hard to know what to say. And, and you may have tried to explain the gospel to somebody who doesn't know it or believe it and by the time you're halfway through or maybe when you're done, you feel like a complete failure because you didn't quite know how to say and the moment just got the best of you and, and your mind went blank. It just usually doesn't go as smoothly as it sometimes sounds like it should be when we talk about it in church or Sunday school. Here it's easy to say, go, tell others, but out there it's not that easy. But this isn't a new problem or a new issue. We heard two examples of this from the, from the lectern today. First in the Old Testament, the prophet Amos, he had the word of God and he faithfully spoke the word of God, but in return, a king and a priest both thought that he was just trying to make money. They didn't think he really meant what he said and they dismissed him and told him to stop bothering them. And then when Jesus sent out his 12 apostles, he gave them instructions assuming that there were going to be a number of people who would flat out reject them. And how do people view Christians today? There are some, there are many maybe, with suspicion, if not flat out hostility. And so when somebody says casually, well now go tell others about Jesus, we probably feel a little uncomfortable. Because we know we should, but we know we really haven't as much as we should. And we want to say to that person, you say that as if it's no big deal, but have you even tried it yourself? And then these encouragements might end up being more like guilt trips as we feel guilty for our lack of effort or our lack of opportunity. And, and we might end up just flat out ignoring such encouragements, convincing ourselves that that's not my job, that, I'll leave that to the pastor or to the evangelism committee because that's not my thing. I'm not good at that. But the thing is, you are the evangelism committee. You are just by virtue of being Christian. Those who have the Savior share the Savior is the worship theme today, and that's a true statement from Scripture. Those who have the Savior share the Savior. That's, that's what they do. But I think we should stop making it sound like it's such an easy, natural thing, because it's not. It's not easy. And if you have found it difficult, you're not the only one. It's not always painless. And so why do it? Lesson from Ephesians today gives us one reason. God has chosen you. It doesn't say that he's chosen you to be a missionary. It's actually a little more profound than that. God chose us in him before the creation of the world 
to be holy and blameless in his sight. So before the world even existed, before the earth was here, before there were people, before there was time, God knew you personally. And that in and of itself is amazing. Because we may walk around our neighborhoods or, or downtown Racine, we may walk into a store, a busy place, and it seems like nobody knows us, and in fact, nobody even seems to care to acknowledge us. Either heads buried in a phone or just not paying attention to everybody around, anybody around them. Or we could walk into a store and feel like we're nothing more than, than just a customer or a number, soon forgotten once we leave. And, and even family and friends move on and move away and contacts, the older we get, become less frequent. And at some point, we all ask ourselves, does anybody really remember me? Does anybody really know me or, or care? God does. And we're talking about the God of all creation, the God of the universe. He knows you. He knows you by name. He knows every little detail about you. He knows you personally. And not only, not only does he know you, and not only did he know you before creation, he chose you. And, and we're told here it wasn't a random choosing either, as if God threw a dart at a board or just closed his eyes and put his finger down. It says in verse 5 that God chose you or predestined you in accordance with his pleasure and will. That means he wanted to do it. He wanted to choose you specifically. And he did it intentionally. And in fact, it was fun for him. He, he found pleasure in choosing you. And he didn't just choose you to exist, to be born and to live. He was more specific. He chose you to be holy and blameless in his sight. Holy and blameless, does that describe you? Or does your conscience kind of prick you when you hear that because you realize that that's not really a good description of you? It almost seems like your life has, has made God look bad because of his choice of you. As if you would choose somebody to be on your team or, or to be your worker and that person just is completely worthless. It reflects poorly on you for making that choice. Do we reflect poorly on God for his choice? Not at all, because there are two little words in here that change everything. In him. God chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless. And the him is referring to Jesus. So you were chosen in Jesus. That means when God looked at you, when he, when he foresaw you, he was looking at you through the filter of Jesus. He chose you to be one for whom Jesus would die. He chose you to be one whose specific sins would be forgiven by Jesus' specific death on the cross. He chose you, he predestined you to be part of God's family, to be adopted as his child through Jesus Christ. And that is the reason that you have faith. That's the reason you are here this morning. You have faith because God chose you to be forgiven and saved. And so he made sure, as he guided and directed all of history, he made absolutely sure that you would come across the gospel that you would be baptized, that you would hear the word of God so that you could have faith, so that you would learn to know and to trust that Jesus Christ is your substitute in life and in death. He chose you before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless, and so he made you holy and blameless in Christ through his life and death. This is what is sometimes called the doctrine of election. It's the, the teaching, the doctrine, the teaching from the Bible that God chose people. He chose in advance and knew in advance who would be saved. So how can you be sure that you are one of them? That God has really chosen you? Really, that's nothing to worry about. 
Because remember, you were chosen in Christ. The proof of your election is in the gospel, where it says Jesus died for you. Jesus is the reason God chose you, and Jesus has done everything necessary to make you holy and blameless. Because he lived the life that was required of you and then gave you credit for it, and then he died your punishment. He died the death that was your punishment. And so it's clear from the gospel that you are chosen. So what does this have to do with evangelism, with telling other people about Jesus? Well, you see, it means no guilt trips because Jesus has taken away your guilt. And because the responsibility for changing people's minds and hearts is not your responsibility, it's God's. God has chosen those who are saved. And that means the people that, that you will talk to and the people that are around you. The salvation of other people does not depend on you, it depends on God. And so then how do those people come to faith that God has chosen? In the same way you did, it, they come to faith through hearing the word. And this is where we do come into play. Our work is not to convince people to believe. Our work is simply to announce the gospel, to announce what we believe, so that those who have been chosen by God will hear it and hear it from our mouths and then be gathered into the family of believers with us so that when they do come to faith, all those who are saved can only praise and thank God and all those who reject God can only blame themselves because Jesus died for all. Does this truth of election make it easy to share your faith, to tell others about Jesus? No, it doesn't. It takes some pressure off, but it's still difficult. And so God has provided two things to help us as we fulfill our obligations, our, our responsibilities, and our privileges as, as members of the evangelism committee. Two things he's given us. One is the group of people that are sitting around you right now. Because these are people that are doing the same thing as you and struggling with the same struggles as you, who can share experiences of their efforts as the evangelism committee, and who could receive encouragement from you, and, and people who can help you out and give you tips and opportunities to do that. The second thing that God has provided to help us in our evangelism efforts is his grace. And don't overlook that or take that for granted. In his grace, his love, God has chosen you to be his own. You're his. And that means he's never going to leave you. You'll never be alone no matter what you're doing out there. You'll never be alone in your efforts to tell people what you believe. You'll never be alone in your efforts to live your faith and, and, and be a light. And God continues to offer that grace through word and sacrament here so that you can fill up with that grace, with that gospel, so that when you are full, that gospel will flow out of you to others. There's a portion of today's communion liturgy that's taken directly from this text, from verse 3 of Ephesians chapter 1. So listen for it. Uh, near the beginning of the communion portion of the service, Pastor Reckley will say, Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Every spiritual blessing. You have that already. Everything that, that you need for your salvation and your forgiveness, everything you need for peace, and everything you need to be a member of the evangelism committee, to share what you know with others, all because God has chosen you. So fill yourself up with God's grace and then let it flow out to others. Amen.